I was at a fish club meeting last night presenting and that was what one of the guys was talking about was the struggles of having an apartment and not being able to breed a lot of fish. And we just need to make sure that we stay motivated and dedicated. Today we're talking about a subject that's very near and dear to my heart and that is breeding fish in apartments. Because all of us would love to have more fish tanks in our apartments but for some reason or the other we don't have as many fish tanks as we would like to have or that fish room that we would like to have. And we're stuck to a very limited amount of tanks either due to spouses significant others children or just a lack of space to put up more tanks and trying to decide what we're going to breed and be able to actually enjoy the hobby can be difficult at times because you just don't do the same vanilla things that are done over and over again that everyone else is doing like breeding guppies or breeding shrimp or things of that nature not to degrade those people that do that but that if you want to spice things up a little bit and try some different breeding setups it can be challenging to do that. So today I wanna to give you guys some tips on how I go about breeding fish in my apartment that aren't those that I listed and sort of the setups that I do and how to best utilize the space that we have in a usually smaller environment. The first thing to talk about is what types of fish should we stay away from or what types of fish would not be very conducive for apartment breeding. Um, some of the ones that come to mind are plecos, angelfish, most of your African cichlids, most of your Central and South American cichlids. We want things that are going to be small and stay small throughout the entirety of the life cycle so we can utilize the tank space that we have to the best of our abilities to be able to have as many different areas of size differences for our baby fry to be growing out in. Some fish that could be good that sort of fall in those categories of African cichlids for instance could be, you know, your Maltese or your Similis that don't take up as much space as say your Mabunas or Peacocks or Haps or Predatory Haps or things of that nature that require much larger tanks and in turn require a lot more space to be able to grow out the fry to the size that we need. And we could utilize that space better if we focus on smaller fish. And those smaller fish don't necessarily have to be community fish. They could be Epistogrammas or they can be bettas or they could be the shell dwellers that i mentioned but there are certain constraints that we have to think about and tank sizes is usually an issue when you're in an apartment so you can only usually have maybe one large show tank and the rest of them are going to be relatively small and usually stacked on top of one another the second thing while we're talking about show tanks is utilizing show tanks in a very strategic way so when we have a limited amount of tank space we need to be thinking about how we can have as many different groups of breeders as we can in our possession to be able to spawn them at different times and move them into our usually dedicated spawning tank. And we'll, we'll go see that in a little bit, the spawning setup that I have. But by having show tanks that have a wide variety of different fishes, you can have the potential to have five or six different spawning groups of different species that you can pull out from your show tank, put into your breeding tank, and then put them back into your show tank once you're done. I'm doing this currently right now with my Celestial Pearl Danios and my Danio Caiathids, as well as some long fin Danios that I have outdoors for the summer as just a holding over and hopefully trying to get some more. So the third thing that we're going to talk about is timing. And this goes into the, the last point here is that when you have a smaller apartment or limited tank space, not necessarily an apartment, you need to be strategic about how you breed fish and when you breed fish. You can't just let fish just spawn uncontrolled because you're gonna end up with tons and tons of eggs and henceforth fry and smaller fish and juveniles and you won't have any place to put them. So you need to be strategic about, okay, I am going to spawn these fish. I know how much space I have. I can spawn them for this long. And then I need to start thinking about either putting them back into my show tank if I wanna breed more for myself or trying to find avenues to sell them. So for me, the species that I'm working with are Celestor Prodaniums. They're very tiny fish. They spawn readily, they're very easy to spawn. They spawn constantly, so I can constantly have an egg flow of Celestor Prodanios that I can raise up and grow on a schedule. Now, when I start getting into wanting to spawn some of the other ones and swapping around adult pairs and whatnot, I'm going to have to be a little more strategic about how I plan out when I'm spawning, say, my Daniel Caiaphas in relationship to my Celestor Prodanio, so I don't have an issue of running out of actual real estate for my fish to be able to spawn in. So while we're talking about that, let's hop over to the second bedroom that has my rack of fish tanks. And we'll sort of talk through that and sort of see how everything is set up so that I can actually breed fish in an apartment with a limited amount of tanks. Like tanks, I, anyways, I'll just show you. It's easier to explain. So here we have the racking system I was talking about. And you can see up here, I have my breeders from my Celestia Prodanios a fry grow out tank slash future breeding space for pygmy sunfish 
grow out tank for my Slister Prodanios. And then I have a 40 gallon breeder on the bottom that has blue flash plecos and super red bristlenose plecos that I'm growing out as future breeding projects uh, in the hopes of having more tank space in the future. But I also then have a Zish breeder box and then floating containers, which we can go up and see a little bit better. So we start off here with my breeders and I have entire videos talking about how I breed my Celeste Prodanios and the things that I use. If you guys are looking for that, there is a link in the description below for the entire playlist and I'll leave a video at the end. But this is where it all starts out. I start off with breeding them in here and they get moved down into these smaller containers here. I actually have some fry down in there right now. And as the fry grow up, they get moved into larger and larger and larger containers until they end up in either a five gallon tank or inside the Zish breeder box inside the 40 gallon breeder. And you can see here that the 40 gallon breeder is the singular tank here. I could have had one tank here, a 40 gallon breeder with its stand higher up and I would have only had one tank to be able to work with. But because I stacked them, with five gallon tanks up here and a 40 gallon breeder down below, I now have, you know, in theory, a spawning tank, two rural tanks, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six or seven is what I've had on top actually grow out tanks for my different age groups of CPDs. And in the bottom tank here, like I said before, I'm not wasting it with anything. I have some white cloud mountain minnows that I have in here growing out as future breeders that I could then move up into this tank here and spawn some of those if I wanted some more of those. I also had the super red plecos and the blue flash plecos in here that are growing out uh, in the hopes of being able to spawn them a couple years from now as they uh, mature and get larger. So if I had wanted to use this space differently, I could have only had one tank here, but instead I get to have three tanks here with, with the possibility of having a fourth five gallon tank over here if I remove the brine shrimp hatchery. And as I said before, we need to be able to use our space efficiently. So if we can only have uh, a what is this, a three foot by one and a half foot area, we need to make the most of it. And in theory, I like to have more tanks up there, but that's where I keep all my additional supplies. So I, in theory, you could have four more five gallon tanks up there on that top shelf, in addition to these, in addition to this. And that right there, when you're breeding small fish like Celeste Pro Danios or other Danios or Rasboras or Micro Rasboras or Tetras, this is plenty, plenty of space to be growing out one species and growing and producing a lot of them as well as even producing two if you had that additional tank space up there. And all of these tanks are being run off of air filtration. I'm not using any hang on bag filters. I'm not using any canister filters. It's literally all sponge filters and just air stones in these guys. That's all this filtration is, is just green water, the surface area that's in there, as well as air filtration. So it can be done. You just need to be strategic about how you go about choosing your small fish that you're gonna be breeding, how you are stacking your systems how you are keeping breeders around for other species and other projects that you want to work on so that when you are say done with breeding Celeste Prodanias, you have another fish that these females right now are super fat and plump and they could get moved up there tomorrow and I could start having baby white cloud minnows in a couple of days if I wanted to do that. I was at a fish club meeting last night presenting and that was what one of the guys was talking about was the struggles of having an apartment and not being able to breed a lot of fish. And we just need to make sure that we stay motivated and dedicated to our one or two or three or four species that we have in one singular spawning tank. And then we have the other ones and like our display tanks here. If you guys found that helpful, check out some of the other videos over here that are going to be about my CPDs. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.